Haiti this month has seen more civilians killed than Ukraine. The way to describe Haiti, the abyss has no bottom. Marco Larosilier describes an attack on a minibus two days ago. We've obscured the victims. The gangs put fire on that uh, little bus and people were burned alive. It's a new law in uh, the chaos that we are experiencing. President Biden wants the Canadian forces to come to the rescue. So far, Canada has sent two patrol ships. To do what? People are just making jokes of it. We need boots on the ground. If anybody thinks they can go in and do this easily, they need their heads wrapped. Canada's top general, Wayne Eyre, says the forces don't have the manpower. General Eyre is absolutely 100% correct. We could use the entire Canadian Army, regular and reserve, and still not have enough to deal with a city of that size. The forces would face the same problem they faced in Afghanistan, trying to tell friend from foe. What do you do, take everybody from the age of 18 to 24 or 18 to 30, every male 18 to 30 out of the, out of the region? Even the terrain would be against them, says this urban warfare expert. In highly dense areas where they're pretty much sort of higgledy-piggledy, uh, you know, buildings and so on and so forth, I just have to increase the number of troops I've got even to hold a very small area. I can lose a platoon of 30 or 35 guys in, you know, the space of less than a city block. You're not just going to roll into the capital and take it over. He says the gangs will hide when they can, but if they have to fight, they won't care who gets hurt. If the force that you are um, engaging um, has no respect for civilian life, um, then the prospect of civilians being caught in the crossfire is very high. On top of that is the lack of legitimacy of Haiti's government, the unreliability of Haiti's national police, some of whose members are in gangs themselves. A whole raft of reasons why Canada will likely continue to resist U.S. pressure to come to Haiti's rescue. Evan Dyer, CBC News, Ottawa.